Hi there, my name is Gavin, and this is the second update um, that I have for you in relation to the design and the build of my solar energy diverter that we've uh, installed in our house here in Melbourne. Those who have sat through the arming and ahhing of my previous video would note that the system is pretty simple. It looks at the amount of energy we're exporting to the grid, and then based on the level of that energy, then we can switch on appliances in the house. In our case, um, we divert um, solar energy or that energy to a hot water service, electric hot water service, and uh, one or both electric vehicles. The previous system has worked really well and there were no particular issues, though there was one concern I had in relation to heating of the hot water service. As part of the original design, I changed the bottom element in our hot water service from a 3.6 kilowatt element to a 1.8 kilowatt element. And the rationale there was more in relation to overcast and cloudy days, uh, winter days, where obviously our production is limited. Um, and I'm wanting to get the greatest benefit from that production by spreading that load over uh, a longer period of time. And you recall that with the previous system, I really only had the system on or off based on a specific threshold. Uh, now, uh, an example might be, say, you know, on an overcast day, we're exporting one kilowatt uh, to the grid, and I switch on my hot water service of 1.8 kilowatts, I'd still be draining 800 watts from the grid, but at least I'd be getting the one kilowatt advantage, and I could hopefully spread that over the course of the day. If I kept my 3.6 kilowatt element in there, and I, again, switch that on with one kilowatt export to the grid, I'd be getting that one kilowatt benefit, but I'd be drawing then from the grid 2.6 kilowatts. And um, essentially, I would heat my water too quickly and there would be residual solar capacity during the day that I couldn't get any benefit from in, in, in relation to heating of hot water. There is one other issue and that weather being what it is, it's never, uh, you will get fully overcast days, but sometimes even on overcast days, you'll get uh, sunny periods and particularly in spring and autumn seasons you'll get breakthroughs of sunlight. One of the issues with a smaller element in the hot water service is that when it is fully sunny and I might be exporting now let's say four kilowatts to the grid and my hot water service is switched on the maximum I can dump into my uh, into hot water is 1.8 kilowatts whereas I had that bigger element in there I could dump 3.6 and I could may, maybe get better value out of that um, uh, peak period of sunlight that I had or get better, get better benefit from that um, and heat my water more quickly um, uh, and effectively get that, that gain. The only way of doing that, however, is to look at a more dynamic switching capability, which led to the updated design of this new system. So essentially what we're doing now is we're still working on thresholds, but we're switching uh, in a more regular fashion. So we're taking five second samples, and then based on the level of export at that time, we're switching our hot water service on uh, for a period of time, a duty cycle for that five second period. So if I give you an example, let's say um, we've got a 3.6 kilowatt element in the hot water service, and we're exporting 1.8 kilowatts to the grid at any point in time, or for that five second period, then what I would do, I wouldn't run my hot water service for that entire five second period, but I'd run it for only two and a half seconds or a 50% duty cycle. Now, over a time period, if I was to extrapolate that to an hour and everything being equal, you could argue that I was exporting 1.8 kilowatt hours to the grid and my hot water service was switched on for half that time which is again 1.8 kilowatt hours so the two would essentially offset each other and this is the basis and some people might call this pulse, pulse width uh, switching or pulse width modulation other would call it burst switching uh, which it is it's just a, a more rapid form of switching but it's not super rapid we're not talking uh, kilohertz here or anything like that we're talking samples every five seconds um, and the beauty with this system or this approach is that no, I haven't really had to change anything in terms of the hardware of the diverter design itself. The only thing I have done is put a larger um, uh, heat sink on the um, hot water service solid state relay 
because we're now switching 16 amps and I felt with the uh, smaller heat sinks uh, they were getting too hot uh, and this heat sink has a much much larger central core and lower thermal resistance um, but apart from that the rest of the product can stay uh, in place as it is uh, and so far so good the performance has been excellent just looking at the modes now that I've uh, set up for the uh, diverter um, the standard mode for hot water service which is hot water service only uh, basically now shows that obviously total real power and it's, it's very sunny right at the moment we're exporting 7.2 kilowatts to the grid or 7.3 kilowatts to the grid we're diverting 3.9 kilowatts to the hot water service with a duty cycle of 100%. Uh, the reason this says 3.9 instead of 3.6 is that when I've measured it through this system, uh, approximately our hot water service is draining 3.9 kilowatts. Now that could be either because uh, this, uh, obviously the monitoring here has a level of inaccuracy in it, or maybe the element in the hot water service is drawing a little bit more. If we just watch these five second cycles, you can see now we're exporting 2.3 kilowatts to the grid. 59%, now the sun's gone bright again. This is actually a perfect example, 5.2 kilowatt export. Obviously, anything over 3.9 kilowatts is 100%, right? So, um, and we've got some figures, 3.2 kilowatt now. So I'm exporting as much as I can to the hot water service. Now we're exporting seven kilowatts to the grid and it's maxing out at 3.9. So uh, it can be a very exciting exercise to watch sometimes, but um, you can see the basic operation. So anything over 3.9, the duty cycle sits at 100%. Um, a percent. One change with this process a little bit is that what I am doing is sampling um, every five seconds. So you'll see the lights here on the Arduino and when um, essentially that bottom green light, there's a second green light below the one that's permanently on flashes, the system's taking a sample. So one of the design considerations is that it has to sample obviously without any load imposed on the system. Um, particularly well for the hot water service so I switch off the hot water service take a sample and switch it back on so it's not continually on for a five second period there always is a small gap um, when the system's actually sampling what our net import export position is from the from the grid this is the cycle for uh, charging both uh, the, one of the electric vehicles and also the hot water service and this new system works uh, really well in this case. So essentially uh, what you'll have here, and at the moment what we're seeing is seven kilowatts being exported to the grid, 5.4 kilowatts being effectively exported to both or diverted to both uh, one of the cars and the hot water service. Uh, and the display down here indicates hot water services on basically 100% of the time with the duty cycle 100% and one of the cars is switched on. Uh, the good part about this uh, new approach is that once uh, you can actually set up the car for charging the night before, plug it in, uh, have this mode selected. In the morning, uh, once the sun comes up, once you're past the minimum cut-in threshold, 50 watts, 100 watts, whatever you've set it, you'll start diverting to the hot water service straight away. And once you've reached the minimum cut-in threshold for the car, in which case it's 1400 watts in our case, the car will start charging, will switch on, uh, but the energy diversion of the hot water service will stop. But as your level of exports continues to increase, then you will start diverting more and more to the hot water service. This mode uh, continues, or this mode of operation continues with the hysteresis for the charging of the cars to ensure that they're not cycled uh, quickly or switched off and on in a, in a, uh, a quick fashion. Uh, in my case, the hysteresis period is 20 minutes, which means that once it's, once a charging cycle has begun, uh, that will that charge and cycle will continue for at least 20 minutes. Obviously, you're sampling here every five seconds, and if during that 20 minute period one of the samples uh, exceeds the minimum 1400 uh, watt requirement for the car, then that 20 minute period is reset and the 20 minute period starts again. Uh, so yeah, look, uh, the um, the EV and hot water diversion is uh, really good with the um, the pulse mode or the more rapid mode switching here for hot water. Uh, the second mode here is our second electric vehicle and the hot water service. 
um, the second electric vehicle with a higher level, but not at 1400 watts, but at a higher level around 1900 watts, 8 amps, um, and hot water service. And then we've got the two uh, low cut in modes primarily for charging the EVs during winter months. So essentially, once we're exporting 500 watts or more, we, we switch on one of the vehicles. And whilst that means we're still drawing from the grid, at least we're uh, getting some benefit from our uh, solar exports there. Um, another mode here just to do with the charging of our second EV at high levels, 8 amps, 10 amps, and 13 amps. And then we have... Um, these modes which is quite interesting uh, hot water service 25 so percent max so what that means is that we're applying a duty cycle a maximum duty cycle of 25 percent irrespective of our energy exports so in this case we're exporting almost seven kilowatts but we're only diverting about a quarter of that 3.9 which is give or take one kilowatt hour to or one kilowatt to the hot water service so essentially once we've exceeded that 25% minimum power, so you can work up to the 25% from that minimum cut in, 50 or 100 watt cut in, right up to one kilowatt hour. Uh, once we've hit the one kilowatt threshold, we will not export any more to the hot water service. The reason for that is that in our case, we also run an evacuated tube solar system. Uh, solar hot water system and really what I want to do is heat as much as I can with those tubes and not overheat the water if you can understand with our electrical energy. The problem is if I had this on the standard hot water service mode and we had a day that started and built up I would heat my water within about the first two to three hours of the day and essentially then for the remainder of the day I would end up superheating the water with the with the evacuated tubes. What this does is that it lowers the level of power going, electrical power going to the hot water service and I can get greater benefit out of my solar tubes. And indeed, look, once we're into November uh, here in Australia and then we run through summer, um, I don't, we won't have any diversion, any electrical diversion into the hot water service. The solar tubes will be enough probably for those five months of the year. Uh, but for those shoulder months now being, um, in our case, spring and autumn, this mode and this next mode, which is a 50% mode, are fantastic. Um, and I found these to be quite valuable because um, we don't want to overheat or too quickly heat the water. We want to let the tubes do as much uh, heating as they can. This uh, final mode is hot water service grade in the 3.6 kilowatts. Essentially then uh, what we're looking at here is that we're looking to have a mode where we never draw from the grid to heat the hot water uh, with the electrical power. So I have to be producing in excess of 3.6 or in my case 3.9 kilowatts to switch on the hot water service. So in this case it'll either be 100% uh, diversion or duty cycle or 0% if I fall below an export of 3.9 at the moment. It's, it's, it's quite sunny right now. We're getting 7 kilowatt export, 7.4 kilowatt export. Um, and we're obviously maxing out on what we can divert to the hot water service right now. But once that figure drops below 3.9, it will switch the hot water off. So that's another uh, nice um, approach or model if, you're, you know, if you don't want to draw anything for the grid to heat your hot water. Assuming, though, obviously you've got some. The final mode here is uh, power measurement, uh, which basically switches everything off and just runs a uh, repeating five second uh, interval on sampling um, our energy exports or imports. And then we're back to hot water service only.